Conrad Amen. Uh, I'm very happy to be uh, with you today. It's my honor and blessing. I'm very excited also that all this group. I cannot get more than this. <laughs> and I'm very excited that you are all here. Uh, this is very, uh, very impressive. And um, why this topic is important. So why the topic of his needs and her needs is important. So why we did it, God created that, they, are all, they will be already one. So their needs, oh, khalas. Why his needs or her needs and are complicating things. But their needs, the needs of the couples and I were, were ready to go. So this is a good point. They are different. What else? Unique. Unique. Unique differences. And knowing the differences about yourself and the differences about the needs of your spouse to be is very important key for what? Long lasting communication. Communication. What will happen if the needs are not met? If, if you have Johnny, Johnny is very hungry. Whenever Johnny is coming home, mom didn't cook anything. Johnny keeps asking mom, where is the food? Where is the food? There is no food. So what would Johnny do? He doesn't have food. He doesn't have money. He will starve. He will starve. Or he will jump across the, the fence and, and see their neighbors or his friends or whoever is in the neighborhood who has food because he's hungry. He's not, uh, you are not offering any food and I'm hungry and I'm telling you I'm hungry. So what if I'm not having any food and Johnny is coming and asking about food and I'm ridiculing Johnny's request. <laughs> food? Who eats? <laughs> or or uh, disrespecting or th th think of it in, in a different way. One of the, one of the big, big mistakes we do as couples is first not knowing your needs second not knowing your spouse need third when your spouse is communicating his or her needs you are yeah. neglecting this is the, the this is the this is a good thing you do a uh, good thing but what sometimes what happens is talking the, the, dismiss it even less uh, less hurting. What is really, really, really cutting heart in the heart of, of others is turning it into a sarcastic setting and uh, putting the person down. Yeah. So what's your name? Sharif. Sharif. Think that uh, uh, I lost my wallet. I don't have cash in my uh, pockets. I'm running uh, out of gas, and I'm. I need just ten, twenty dollars just to to put gas and leave. And I kept searching in the room. Who will be the nicest? Who will be the most accommodating? It's very embarrassing that I will. So maybe I know some of you, but I will, I know Sharif. Assume that I know Sharif very long time back. And uh, I will take Sharif on a side. And I tell him, Chief, I am, this is the setting. Can you just give me uh, $20? And I promise you I will send you a check to your home with the amount that you are giving me. And uh, he will be telling you, oh, Abuna, this is very weird. I haven't seen Abuna before asking for $20? In the church, you are doing this? It's, 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 what would I feel? Shame. Shame? Would I go to Sharif to ask him about anything else? Definitely not. Because I went to you with my needs, which is humbling me, because I'm exposing myself. And you are putting me down, and you are being sarcastic, and you are being funny, and you are not respecting this need. So it cuts really deep. Um, and unfortunately, this is why the reasons of affairs is, are happening. Why affairs are happening? 
Because there is a need that is not met, and this need that is not met had been communicated many, many, many times, dismissed, neglected, put down, being sarcastic about, don't care. And in the end, many factors is happening. I need to satisfy the need. I'm not saying that this is an excuse for cheating on your uh, spouse to be. But uh, the devil will be playing a role. Uh, the environments around you will be playing a role. And here, when there is something really serious is going to happen in the relationship because the needs are not known or the needs are not met or my needs are known and met and I don't care about the other's needs. Here, here when you are shooting yourself in your foot. Because, look, if... Um, I wonder if you can absorb me about this, but I have to say it. If your spouse is selfish, you need really to consider. Getting outside of this room separate, much, 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 much easier, and a piece of cake, than getting out of marriage and uh, dissolving the marriage or going through Magla Sipirika and all this drama. The, the worst person that you will ever get married to is a selfish person. And go and screen your, your friends. Who really is giving you the hardest time? Who really you, you can't uh, sit with them? Or the one who is self-centered, going with a self-centered marriage, uh, marriage mindset is a killer. Is a killer to the relationship, killer to the marriage, killer to everything. And the story is, is un, unlimited. I remember even I was working in uh, uh, overseas before priesthood, and I have uh, two or three friends. They finish work by 7, 8 p.m. <coughs> they go, they eat by uh, exactly 45 minutes, and they go outside and they meet at Al Ahwa, and they play estimation till 3 a.m. daily. What is this? If you are in the mindset to live uh, a bachelor life, then stay single. Don't bother and, and make your, the life of the spouse to be miserable all their life because you are self-centered. I'm just saying it from the get-go. Maybe you don't like me. It's OK. You, you want to do something to me. It's true. It's fine. But the, the, the mess that we see after marriages in the Coptic Church is beyond. And the only reason is selfishness that they are living for themselves. They don't care, it's me, it's, uh, I am, my needs is the most important thing, my time is the most important thing, my schedule should overwrite your schedule, my friends should overwrite your friends, my planning is overwriting your planning, as if the person, the other person is, no, is, is not there. So this topic is of extre uh, extreme importance. Let each of you look out can we read this all out loud? Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. This is the golden verse in marriage. This is the golden verse in marriage. Let each of you look out, not only for his own interests, but for my interests, my needs, my plans, my agenda, my schedule, my dreams, not only for your own interest, but also for the interest of others. And this is just a, a golden uh, verse as a commandment that applies everywhere, not only in marriage, but perfectly matching in the marital life. And if we skip this concept, ignore, dismiss, neglect, sarcastic about the needs of your spouse to be, unfortunately, <coughs> this, this, is a, this is a beginning of an end of a relationship. Understanding the differences between men and women, uh, I think this is covered, but there is a myth of superiority of male. And this is part of uh, Middle Eastern culture, Egyptian culture, Pharaonic genes, you name it, Masyani. You think that they are up there, men, and everyone else is there to serve them. This is not the case. I tell you a funny story. A guy have nothing to do with the church, never entered church, never understand anything in the Bible, and he's memorizing only one verse. The man is 
the head of the wife or, or the woman. And every time his, 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 his wife is talking with him, he's telling her, the man is the head of the woman. Don't talk, don't negotiate, just say yes, submit, and that's it. Many, 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 many times she, she got really uh, frustrated. She went to her father of confession. She told him Abuna was visiting them by chance. So uh, uh, Abuna joked around and told him, I know that your Bible verse is the man is the head of the woman. Yes, Abuna, this is very important one. He told him, OK, do you know where is it in the Bible? Uh, uh, no. Do you know anything about the context of this, why this verse has been mentioned? Have no clue. Do you know that this was mentioned in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22? Ah, it's good to know. Do you know what is verse 21? Ephesians 5, 22 is the beginning of the Pauline epistle in the wedding. It's very, very nice, uh, very nice reading. Ephesians 5, 21. خاضعين بعضكم بعضا في خوف الله. Submit to one another in the fear of, of God. Submit to one another in the fear of God. Do you know the last scene? What, what is the last picture that the husband and the wife are taking in the day of the matrimony in the Coptic Rites? Before they leave, before the, the Abunas are standing, what is the picture? They are kneeling down in front of the altar. They are coming closer to each other. And they are bowing down in front of, of God. So kneeling down. So we're humbling. Coming closer, we are united, we are one. Bowing down as we are submitting to God because he is the one who is running our family. It is not me as a man who is running the family or the woman who is running the family because she is uh, too much into uh, feminism. The whole point is, so if the husband and the wife are submitting to each other in the fear of God, Many, many, many problems will be solved. But in, in many cases, uh, you submit to me, no, no, the why I should submit to you, and you sub and the, the myth of uh, male superiority, look to this verse in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 11, nevertheless, neither is a man independent of a woman, nor a woman independent of a man in the Lord. Not independent, even less than the, the woman, and the woman is not less than the man because they are equal in front of they are equal in front of God and they are of the same value because they are their value is the blood of Christ who has been shed on the cross. So understanding the differences is a key. Become aware of each other's emotional needs and learn to meet them. The common example is usually sexual fulfillment is the need number one in, in uh, for men. Intimate conversation is the need number two for women. There is, we don't have a whiteboard here, but there is a very, very weird thing is happening in many, many of the couples that I have seen. So number one for men is what? Sexual, Sexual fulfillment. Number one for fem uh, women is? Talking. talking. Number two for men is? With, with the majority of the, they did, th this is a book that has been done, it's a very classic book. They took maybe um, uh, thousands of thousands of men and women in a huge conference, they separated them, they asked them different questions, they asked them about the 10 human needs that you have in, the, in this paper, and guess what, the five top human needs for women was completely different than the five top human needs for men. And now we are, Pretty much the 10 are split between men and women in a completely different mindset. Number one is sexual fulfillment. Number one is talking. Number two is peace. Number uh, two is compassion for women. Al-Hanan, Salam, Al-Kalam, al So what's happening? The guy is coming 3, 1 a.m. in the morning. He has been uh, traveling a lot. He was very busy, didn't communicate with his wife. His wife is sleeping in, and he wants to wake her up. 
to have intimate relationship. She is in deep sleep. She is giving excuses and they are not getting intimate in that day. What he will feel? Rejected, frustration, anger. What he will be doing? <laughs> look, look what's happening. So the first need is not met. So what happens in the first need for the woman, which is talking? Does he want to talk when he is stressed out and frustrated? Usually not. He goes to his. The uh, Abuna told you about the, what, what men and women does and when they are stressed. So what men does? They go to their cave. They, they go to their cave, they shut down, and leave me alone. What, what does the woman do? Talking. Look what, look, look. See, see, okay, this is your good way. <laughs> but he has a, another good way, and, which, and both are good. So the, the, the physical intimate relationship is not, uh, is not met, the need is not met. He is two options, sometimes aggressive or shutting down. So is he talking with her? So he, she is not feeling the top important priority met. By the way, this is just an example, but maybe 85%, yeah, don't get quote me on 85, but majority of men and women, those are the top two. So his need is not met, he's being aggressive, so he hit in the the, the second one is compassion. Being aggressive is com the opposite of compassion. Or shut down and hitting in. The not, talking. not talking. So her first two needs are, and she will feel humiliated, fr rejected, frustrated. So what will she will do? Not give him peace, pick him on, on a fight. <laughs> Because you know what, uh, you are doing this stuff, let me give, give it back to you. So now we have the two most important needs are not met and they are interlocked in a vicious cycle and I know couples have been like this for years and years and years. Everyone, I'm, I'm looking to my needs, I don't care about whether you, you, you it's important to talk to you or not. You, uh, and meanwhile, the, the lady is working in a very nice firm, has a very nice group of people. It happens that the, those group of people are not there any, uh, for whatever reason. They are going for a training. One of the nice group of people is get, having lunch with her. They started talking. Anything wrong is happening? No, we're just talking. But here what, what is the, the need is met is? Conversation. Conversation, which is number one, priority. Look what happened in the time of engagement. We are sitting talking for hours and hours and hours and hours. Wow. The, 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 this is the, 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 the unbelievable gift from God that he is talking and listening to me attentively for hours. For now. <laughs> so the guy, uh, the guy who is a co-worker with the wife is having uh, his needs is not met so because his wife is distant from him on physical level he started sharing his frustration she is try trying to be nice because he's talking to her and guess what's happening a big mess is happening and this is like a, a cookie cutter setting the need is not met the the spouse is ridiculing dismissing neglecting sarcastic about the need the other person shuts down, the need is met outside, the devil is working, the needs are, uh, are pressing, and here when everything is falling apart. So it is of utmost and crucial importance this, uh, uh, this survey that I have given you. You take it very serious, take a photocopy of it, write your name on it and the, the name of your spouse, and this is a very important tool for you to, to com communicate and co uh, connect on a much deeper level. Okay. So uh, what is your, definitely the sexual fulfillment should not be fulfilled in this time. Because <laughs> this is all, also, okay, he is, he is, this is that much important for him, then uh, let me try to, to, to be there for him and here when the devil is entering and everything is falling apart. I will tell you a sad story. One of the abunas sent me a couple. 
I asked them, uh, been married for 15 years, I don't know the couple, so I tried to get the, the history. They've been married for 15 years, and since day one, nightmare, day one, I told them, even in the honeymoon, she told me, don't talk even about the honeymoon about it. Okay. 15 years, for 15 years you have been fighting. They're completely disconnected, complete. They are roommates will be more, more uh, of a very higher, better description of what's going on. So I told them, okay, the, how did you get married? I mean, if, if it is from day one till now, 15 years, it's a nightmare. So how did you get married? And they told me, Abuna, both of them, they looked to the ground. They were very ashamed and they said, uh, there has been a lot of boundaries that has been crossed sexually between us. So we were stuck. And when we felt that we were stuck, we said, you know what, we need to continue. And we need to continue. All the red flags that was there was ignored and was not noticed. Look, this is a rule. This is the emotions, and this is the cognitive, the cognitive decisions or the clarity in the mind. Are you there? For those who are in the back, I don't know if you are seeing me or not. But this is the emotions, this is the feelings, and this is the clarity of the mind, the ability to make decisions. When emotions is stable, what is stable? The mind is stable and you can think correctly and make right choices. When emotions is up, what, what is by default going down? Your, 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 uh, your, your ability to think clearly, clarity to make decisions, and here, here when you start making very, very wrong decisions in your life. Ask all the people in, the, in prison, all the people in prison, what led you in prison? Uh, Asana, I was angry, I was jealous, I was frustrated. I was, all of them. It was an emotional decision in a time that you shouldn't have taken this emotional decision and you, how many people lost their jobs because of an emotional discussion with their boss? How many people uh, ruined many stuff because of an emotional decision? And I will tell you that the part of the World War II in the history was an emotional decision of, of France. Hitler was taking over the, the other side of Europe. He attacked a place where it has connection with France. Are you there? Hitler was not moving. France is on the left. If you go to the, to the job, France is on the left. Hitler is moving this way, towards Russia. There was a place that was connected. I forgot the name of the place. was connected to France by somewhere. And he attacked this place. What happened is a volcano happened in France, and how dare you do this, and you are not right, and 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 and. And Hitler said, those are rats. He said this, France are rats. You know what? I was moving forward in that direction. He made a U-turn. He sent, I don't know how many uh, of, of, of his troops, and he received Paris on a turnkey, not even a single bullet that was being uh, uh, shot in France. He turned, he, they knew that he is coming, they left everything to, in him, he, they gave him the keys of the, the, the country and they told him, you know, be our guest. Do you know why? Because of the valuable arts in, in France. They said, we don't want to destroy our heritage. So we'll keep Tour Eiffel and we'll keep the, the good stuff that we have. And it was just an emotional decision from, the, from, the, uh, from France that really ruined, ruined the, whole, the whole game. You know, uh, the, the most famous uh, the, the, the airport in, in, uh, in France is, is named what? Charles, Charles de Gaulle. Charles de Gaulle was the general in charge in the time of Hitler who make a very wise decision. They were going to escalate again with France, and he said, with, uh, with Germany, he said, no, we are not equipped, we don't have the troops, we don't have the money, we don't have the manpower, we cannot go in this right now. And he postponed 
or hold or put the break on a very emotional decision that can ruin, ruin the whole country because of an emotional decision. So what about back to that, that couple? It was the lust that took over and the mind was checked out and all the major red flags was there. They ignored, 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 ignored. Then day one, boom, <laughs> everything fell apart. So it is better for us to live a pure life. It is better for us to keep our needs met in a righteous way in the fear of God. It is better for us <coughs> to, um, to obey God, not to obey ourselves and live a selfish one. Ignoring the needs can lead to a frustration, potentially infidelity in the relationship. Those are the need, the need of admiration, appreciation, selling edict. You look great. Thank you for uh, for all your effort. Thank you for providing for the family. Thank you for working all this this uh, this works. I remember uh, a couple disasters, and the guy told me this statement. I couldn't even. Uh, in his job, he can work 72 hours back to back, and he said this. He told me, Abuna, if she said thank you, if she just said thank you. I can work 72 hours non-stop without sleeping and I would be happily doing it. But she doesn't care where I'm getting thank you from, from my secretary, from my neighbors, from my uh, friends, from the people whom I know. And guess what is going to happen? It's, it's, a, it's a, as I told you, it's a cookie cutter. Affection, which is the number two for women. Conversation, number one. Affection and conversation are both interchangeably, domestic support, financial support, family commitment, um, honesty and openness, this is, this is a key. I think this is not a need, this is a foundation. If there is no honesty and no openness, then uh, you are moving on, a, you, are, you, are, you are entering a, a very risky setting. Physical attractiveness, recreational companionship, and sexual fulfillment. So it is very important to identify what is my needs, identify what is each one on a personal level, then expect, okay, what is the need of my spouse or my, my fiancé or my spouse to be, and then communicate with the, those together because it is of... Uh, Oh, very, very important, and never, I beg you, never, never, never ridicule, dismiss, uh, be sarcastic about the need, because if Sharif started making fun of me because I asked him for $20, maybe uh, maybe next time he is going to take communion, I'm telling you what, you are not taking communion for one year. <laughs> it's, ir it's an emotional decision. It's irrational. Because I'm very, very frustrated or upset or ashamed or, or, or. So, it is a fact that women are at, the, their needs are, are oppositely matching the, the needs of the men. It's important to remember that everyone's unique and has different needs. And don't take the, the two top needs that I assume, or I, the, the research has shown that this is, okay, then this is a, a cookie cutter that applies to everyone. To successfully address your need of the spouse, you need first to identify them and speak about them. And by the way, sometimes the needs change during the time. For example, if, um, if you got married and uh, you are still single, you don't have kids, and uh, everything is fine, and the, the need, the family commitment or the domestic support helping out in the home was not a, a big need for, for your wife. Now you have two kids. She is working, she is exhausted, she needs help. Then this can come up as a need that is very important. So you need also to assess. So it is not fixed, this is the need for life, no. Failure to meet, to need, to meet your spouse needs create a thirst to fulfill those needs. They become more and more important the longer they continue to be unfulfilled.